Hi. It's really great to be here. And I also was struck by the Hall of Fame ceremony last night, which was uh, a delight. As I listened to the inductees give their talks, each person had, in theory, one to two minutes, although it was a little bit longer. Um, the thing that struck me the most was the idea of connectedness. And although we use other words for it, over and over and over again, what I heard was the goal of enabling connections. As many connections as possible, connections between wildly different environments, connections between unknown and unforeseeable environments, and connections with as little friction as possible. And so I've come away with an enhanced interest and focus on this idea of connectedness as a core organizing principle. I was also struck, Steve Crocker spoke about the RFP process, which had the same idea in it, which to me, I hadn't known before, that that process was designed with a recognition that building connectedness and building the internet requires a social element. And that connectedness is true among machines, and it's also true among people. And so I don't think he was speaking exactly of social media, but if we look at the phenomenon of social media, we can see that it too is about connectedness. How many connections are possible? How many peer-to-peer -peer connections are possible? Are they possible from unknown and unforeseen environments? Is it possible to connect to different people with little friction? And it seems easy to nod one's head and say, yes, connectedness, ease of connecting, different environments, heterogeneity. Uh, and it, today, when we, I think especially among ourselves, when we talk about these things, it's just very easy to nod our heads and say, well, of course, that's obvious. But I don't think it is obvious. Uh, probably wasn't obvious uh, when it was created the first time around. And it's not obvious today to most people outside of our worlds. We see that connectedness is often regulated. Access is sometimes regulated for its own sake, or for the sake of control, or for the sake of centralizing. We see that the ability to connect is regulated increasingly based on content. And so increasingly, we see that content and connectedness are merging. And sometimes those regulations on content are so extreme that they start to threaten the ability to connect. So we see all sorts of government regulations and censorship and all sorts of things with well-meaning intents, but that threaten the nature of connectedness. And sometimes the ability to connect the way the internet permits is so threatening that governments will allow a regulation of content and expression that they never would in other aspects of life. So we know that a repressive government that doesn't have free speech or has extensive censorship in the print and online and broadcast media is likely to apply the same thing to the internet. That is tragic, but to be expected. But what we're also seeing today is governments and societies that have much more open systems for content and free expression in print looking very carefully at regulations on the online world that allow tracking and logging and censorship that would never be permitted in the world we've known to date. And so that, I think, is the power of connectedness being so strong that it's forcing otherwise open societies down a more closed path than they realize. And so part of the future for us is learning how to better express the, the distinction between connectedness and the absolute crit criticality of connectedness for this world and the uh, fears that it arises as people as it gets connected to content. We don't have the answers yet. I mean, it's a kind of a knockdown fight right now. So we see that in government regulations over free expression. We also see regulation of content, and excuse me, regulation of connectedness through content for investment and business models. Net neutrality being a good example here, where the need to build infrastructure, the need to invest in infrastructure, the need to have business models around infrastructure that make sense lead to legislative proposals that affect the connectedness of the internet. 
or uh, proposals that one kind of content is permitted or you know, another kind of content isn't permitted or that you would have various channels and you might pay a certain amount and get some channel of information but not have access to, to other kinds of information. So uh, breaking up and fragmenting the connectedness of the internet. And so we also see, of course, in copyright, you know, fragmentation of connectedness as well. So this basic idea of connectedness seems so very obvious, but in fact, I think it's very power means it's facing threats today. Uh, there's another kind of connectedness that also came out of the founding of the internet, and that is the connectedness to create, to go beyond the connectedness to consume and the, have the ability to create. So the internet is fundamentally different, as we know, from broadcast media or from cable media. And this ability to create is deep in the architecture of being able to plug in at the edges and the RFP process and the standardization process. This today is also something we have to think about really carefully. It's not obvious to the rest of the world that one of the key aspects of the internet is the ability to create and to, to go beyond consumption when you want and to create. So the, so the Internet Society is doing some of this. I see this as I travel the world meeting Mozilla communities. Increasingly, I'm meeting people uh, from ISOC who are involved and who are trying to create things. So I know that the Internet Society is working on this. Mozilla is working on this, too. Our, our goal is create software, you know, create a layer of the Internet stack above the, the protocols that uh, ISOC works on but also to create communities of people who experience openness, experience connectedness, and experience the joys of creating. There's a sort of mythology that uh, it's great to be a couch potato and sit back and everything's free, especially on the internet. What more could you need? Uh, it turns out many people, some of the time, long to be able to create. Sometimes that's the luxury of creation. Uh, I think for those of us uh, here, certainly, uh, uh, to, to meet one's needs. For many people, though, the ability to create is the question of whether you have a chance of economic empowerment. Right? If you can't create, if you can't create a way to learn, earn a living, if you can't create a little business, if you can't create the things you need in life to actually change your scope, then you're stuck on some centralized authority. And we can see today that the centralized institutions of our world are not going to solve our problems. You know, the billions of people who are hungry are not going to be cared for by some large centralized organization. Humans are smart, and we're ingenious, and given frameworks and tools for empowerment, we do amazing things. And so this ability to create, to use those human values, and to build an internet and a framework and a connectedness and an ability to create life across the planet is a tool, the internet is a tool like we have not seen before. And so one key aspect of connectedness is to move to this creation piece. And looking towards the future, the single thing I can think of that's likely to be effective is to touch more people with the power of openness and the ability to connect and create. So making it easy for people to experience what it is when you can actually get in, view source, as we say on the web, uh, actually see what makes the world, take it apart, put it back together again. And so there is a range of policy issues to be addressed, which ISOC is doing. There's a range of very deep technical issues to be addressed. But one key that I urge all of us, including Mozilla, which is my mission for the future with Mozilla, is to help more people create a framework in which more people experience the openness of the internet, experience the ability to connect, and the ability to create. And so that means reaching outside of our communities to the gentleman who spoke in the prior session about not talking among ourselves. There's a big piece of that. It's hard to do sometimes. The programs that we're finding inside Mozilla that are effective are different, right? It's not always talking to technologists. It's an effort, uh, well, actually, as we did with Firefox, to have a different mindset. What's the mindset of a consumer? What would a consumer product, you know, 
uh, look like. But here it's what are the aspects of connectedness and creation that we know something about and that we can help uh, at least lay a, a, the possibilities for those sets of people who are eager. Like it's clear when you travel the world. I, 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 sometimes I go to events like this one, but I also go see Mozilla communities. And sometimes they're small, they're two or three or four or 20 or 30 people, but they're the core, like the Internet Society chapters, of people who can see that, yes, I can build. I don't need to be in Silicon Valley. I don't need to work for Google. I don't need to work for Mozilla. Here are, here are tools, and here's an availability, and here's someone, when I have a question, will answer it. Here are some tools. Here's some ways to move forward. And so, Increasing numbers of people are doing their own thing to connect and to create. Where the Internet Society, I hope Mozilla is doing some of this, and there are other organizations as well, are not expanding ourselves, per se, really. I mean, chapters are great. You know, Mozilla communities are great. But what's really important is the number of people who have experienced the real openness and creativity of the web and are using that to build a better world in their lives. Some of that will do that in the technical area and will join with what we're doing. And increasingly, if we're successful, millions of people will be experiencing that in other aspects of life. Because we will not solve global problems. We will not solve uh, employment opportunities. We will not, not solve the financial and, and environmental crisis from any one centralized spot, not even here in Geneva. Right. That has to happen on an organic basis with lots of activities and happening in different locales with people trying different things and finding things that work. And so I would say that the fundamental principles that went into designing the internet of connectedness, not controlling who or how, not trying to foresee what happens, and separating out the ability to connect from the actual content or what's actually in those packets is as important today going forward for the big issues of our time as they are in designing the internet itself. Thank you. Thank you very much.